Bring back memories. That's the Robocop thing. It's the Robocop sound. That's not bad, is it? Lifetime 86 miles per gallon. That's bloody brilliant. For a four seat, c comfortable car. 66,700 miles now. Yeah. It's boxed me nicely. That was designed in what, 2010? Yeah. 2009, maybe? It all works absolutely fine. It's all good. It's been... you're, you're basically trying to sell me my old car back. I am. I don't even know why I'm <laughs> falling for this shit. So welcome everybody, I'm with Johnny Smith and we are in your old my Chevy old Volt. My old Chevy Volt, yeah, one of 122 in Britain. We bought this from you, what, three or four years ago? Mm. I think it was. Must be that now. Yeah, it must mm. be. And we've put 30 odd thousand miles, nearly 67,000 miles on this now. So I, I really was on. quite sad about letting this car go. It's been great. Um, yeah, has it? I'm really glad because I thoroughly enjoyed it and it was one of those cars that when it were launched, I, I kind of thought that's a car that I would like, like a piece of when, you know, when they're when when they're a few years old when I can afford one. So I, m I remember remember reviewing one on TV and thinking I like it. And I always thought I like the Ampera and I like this. It was a camera. I've lost a camera. It doesn't matter. Um, but I preferred the rarity value of the Volt. Now that's not my music. No. That's uh, Magic Mike music, that this is. This has so still got your music in it. Has it? It's still on the hard drive. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it... All your stuff. Do so you remember how to use it? It's there. It's I'm trying there. to think, because it does have quite a big... I, what was it? Like a like five gig or something? There was I loads should... of stuff, and yeah. it's still on there. I think it does there. HDD. HDD. Reading HDD. Oh, well, we can't. We can't. <laughs> we can't show that. No, we can't. <laughs> but there's another track there somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how many albums? Have a look through 84 your... albums. So we're just doing this like an, a bit of an idle chat, really. We've got no plan. I'm just dropping Johnny to the station. Uh, and Johnny's always doing idle chats with other people, so let's just have an idle chat I wanted with to you. have a chit-chat. Well, the thing I love about the Vault is it always felt well when, when engineered because I think they went overboard to prove mm. the engineering, yep. right? And I love this first-generation iPod-style kind of pearlescent white centre console. And actually, I'm looking at it now thinking that's, well, what, a 12 years old design? It is, yeah. Well, I still think it's all right. It's all right, it takes a bigger use of it. Yeah. Like, the remarkable thing, we've had no problems with this at all, and there's not even a squeak or rattle. Every time I drive this, it's still just nice. Is it? It rides well, I think it even handles okay. Like, it was so yeah. underestimated. I think GM should have put the Saab badge on this. Yeah. And maybe it would have been something that could have helped save Saab. Yeah. Who My knows? daughter always loved having the individual seats in the back with the with your own console. That's it. Because you said it felt like you were on an aeroplane. Yeah. With a little bit of the sunshade kind of like hatchback. Have you still got... I remember watching your video where you were driving this and doing a very similar thing to what we're doing now, but many years ago. Have you still got that video? Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably have. I keep most videos. It was... Uh, storage is the big I remember one. watching that and then I remember buying the car. Yeah. You know, after that. I so. remember putting it up for sale and you immediately just went, I'll have it. That's it. And I was like, well, do you want to come and see it? And you're like, well, if it's as you say it is, I believe you, yeah. Yeah. I'll buy it. That's been good. And it was, it was always good. I took it to, in fact, you mentioned Saab. I used to get it serviced at an ex Saab, ex Chevrolet dealer. So they were Saab, they were Chevy. Yep. And they used to, they still did all the high voltage stuff. Um, and they were brilliant. We'd just been to our local Vauxhall dealer. And we've kept it as a main dealer because it helps with the values, but they charge like £95 for a service, which only pay for the stamp, really, but it's, it's cost hard anything. Yeah, but like years. these days, that you can pay that at a BMW for a screen wash and... Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, like exactly. lift the bonnet and just check that there's no wires hanging off. This is it. That's really good. You're, you're, you're making me want my own car. Yeah, it's a good salesman, eh? It's got a really good sound. I remember the sound system being mega. It's all right. It's a well, you're, thing, you're, you're it? used to a Tesla Y now, which has like basically cinematic sound. But, it's not bad, yeah. But this, for its time, again, no, really good. top spec, this one. What sort of questions do you normally ask in your idle chat, Johnny? I haven't oh planned gosh. anything at all, and I feel like I'm, I'm just completely unprepared because this is all last minute and we haven't scripted it, but... You know, the vet phoning me. Oh, you better take that. So my, <laughs> yeah, okay. cat, my cat, Brian, I had to take him into the vet. Brian. Pets. Yeah, Brian. I, I used to have a cat called Dave. Did you? There's nothing better than a Brian. human name. My Brian dog's called Dave. Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian the cat, that's a good one. Brian, well, and it, they said he's nil by mouth for 12 hours before you take him in because he's got to be he's got to be put to sleep, had his blood checked and his urine checked, you know, proper MOT. Cat, the teeth industrially clean because cats go mental if you try and clean their teeth. But, uh, I've never tried cleaning well, a cat's don't, teeth. Don't, don't try cleaning a cat's mouth. <laughs> anyway, anyway face off. Um, 
so yeah, but uh, they said nil by mouth, and I kept I kept saying nil bry mouth because we call him bry, short for Brian. <laughs> so nil bry mouth, he was going mad this morning at me. The fact I wasn't bet. giving him food. Anyway, he's, anyway. he's alive. He's good. What I was going to ask you, Johnny, is kind of like for me, I've had to kind of make a business out of my li- my hobby, my interest. I think my first word was Cortina. Yeah, like <laughs> you got into. Uh, Presumably cars. You, were, I remember you from fifth gear like years ago. You seem like a young age. Yeah. When you you were on screen and you were reviewing cars. Yeah. Twenty seven. I started on TV. Yeah. And was it always cars for you? Was it just that kind of passion from year dot type of thing? Yeah, it was. It was always. I was always interested in cars, and I I I, I guess I wanted a career involving cars, but I wasn't entirely sure because when you're young, you don't really know the scope of jobs yep. do you no and jobs have never been broader than they are now actually so I, I I thought what am I good at and what do I like and I tried to sort of combine these two things and one thing I was really mad about was car magazines I used to always buy car magazines yeah. used to pour over which them. ones used to love um, Street Machine used to love Car used yeah. to like Volksworld used to like um, or I used to buy Auto Express quite a lot yeah uh, or, I mean I had every what car since December 1989 or something, I think it was. Right. And I had them for years and I had boxes of them in the loft and the ceiling was always collapsing. Oh my god. I went to the car boot in the end and sold them all. Um, But I had every single, but I like what car because I could always read all the stats at the back. But this is the thing. Well, no, and I think it's that sort of interest. It was a combination of that, me thinking, well, I'm I'm good at English. I used to enjoy writing. And um, I kind of thought, do I go into like, I'd like to work in advertising and commercials. I, yeah. I, I, want, I wanted to work in TV commercials because I used to watch stuff on the TV like the advert for the new Peugeot 405. Yes. Do you remember that? <laughs> With Where the there flames. Was that field on fire. Yeah, I remember the car, that. And it was Berlin, take my breath away, Top Gun theme. That's and it. I thought, this is, when, this is when car adverts had a lot of money spent on them. Yes. And they still told you stuff about the car. Now they don't really tell you anything about the car. In fact, car adverts are crap now. I like perfume adverts. It's yeah, just a, but they're just random. A, a, the random thing to give you it's some It's just a bloke painted gold coming out of the ocean and firing a bow and arrow. But you came at it from, from journalism, from writing initially. How yeah. did you get the break on Fifth Gear, for example, I, TV work? I got the break on Fifth Gear because I... Uh, a, 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 a colleague I was working with, Tom Ford, he had a job on Fifth Gear, so he used to do sort of part-time presenting. And he said, you should... Um, you should apply, they're looking for new presenters. And I, I was like, oh, well, maybe. And then at the Geneva Mocho, I bumped into him filming a report on the Geneva Mocho for Fifth Gear. And I, yeah. I inadvertently met the exec producer. And he said, oh, can we have a chat? Maybe have lunch sometime. And he gave me his card and he emailed me and said, let's have lunch. I went to Birmingham to have lunch. Well, I thought it was just lunch. And it ended up being an impromptu screen test. He basically said, I'll meet you in the oh, car really? park. Okay. And he came out to the car park with a camera. Yeah and said, I want you to talk about the car you've just turned up in for 15 minutes, go. Righto, that was it. Luckily, I knew about the car I turned up in because I was, I was really, <laughs> I would have been, I would have, I would have screwed up. Well, I think most if you're that much of a car fan, you probably can talk about in almost any car pretty much, can't you, in some Pre- degree? Yeah. Pretty much, I mean, that you're, you always, stuff. you're always learning. I reckon I've hit an age where I'm, I, I realise that you still, have so much to learn every every time you look yeah, at a absolutely. car or you read about car history or engineering that's really how it pans out i mean i always wanted to be a car designer yeah and I even yeah you know, i went through after school i did a product design and i applied for coventry university cars and i was actually offered a place and then for some reason i decided to keep my options open a bit so i did a degree in product design thinking i'll do car design later and then oh, really? at uni i just went a little bit off the tracks and it, i always wanted to do like the engineering type of design yeah and rather than and there was a very artistic type of design so i came off the tracks for the, the car design when i somehow for some reason i turned down commentary in my youthful oh, wow. wisdom did um, you um which is a did shame. you finish your degree I did, yeah. So I've got a degree in product okay. design. I see. I never. I then ran a software one. company, and I've always been into cars. And I think that's how I've kind of come round to electric Teslas and yeah. stuff like that. You've mixed all those three up. I think you know latest tech and that uh, that figures now. Yeah, you get that it. figures. <laughs> so that's how I've come you, about. You this. understand the tech quite quickly, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I like take a bit stuff. of getting used to. I'm a quite slow learner with some of the tech. Well, I've seen, like, what I see with you, I mean, your channel now, I mean, give your channel a bit of a big up, and uh, probably people watching this know about Johnny's channel, but... It's called he's The got Late a, Break Show. You've got a real mixture of stuff on there, it's great. Yeah, typically 50% of what I do is electric-based. Uh, yep. 
Um, so yeah, we do new car reviews, classic stuff, barn finds, car collections, my project cars. That's kind of it, really. And there's all, I mean, there's more electric cars coming out than ever before, so there's no shortage of stuff. You've got that, you've got that kind of real passion for the older stuff, stuff that smells of petrol and oil and dusty barns and bits and memorabilia <laughs> and, and do, uh, childhood memories and stuff like that. Um, that there is get that. woken up because I, I see a Peugeot 205 GTI and like I never had my Miami Blue GTI, I never had it, and I seriously still want to buy one. You should, but they keep going up in price. They were like a thousand pounds in five grand. Now, a good ones, I'll pick a number 15, yeah. 16, 17. Yeah, I think. That's my yin and my yang, basically. Yeah. Is by during the week, I drive EVs. Yep. Most of the time, you know, when I had this, this is it. This was it. it I drove this in between anything that I was testing. Yeah. And then at the weekend, I guess, is stuff that's old and smelly and you know, piston. This is and this is the, my sort of point really. It was that a lot of people say, yeah, but you're you're petrol. And you go, like, I think you can still enjoy cars you can still enjoy yeah. a VA uh, whatever turn you know fixture switch turns you on uh, I love, I've always had my TVRs before and BMW M5s but ultimately what you drive to work and up the motorway and in traffic jams yeah if you can be that can be a modern electric course, car I don't see can. why anyone would walk into Land Rover now and buy a new Range Rover I just no, don't get it I don't get it well also you just said TVR no one in their right mind would daily drive a TVR in Britain. No, not really. And also, <laughs> I, I think, I think bit, probably the, the, the charm of it would rub off quite quickly because yes. you'd be like, bloody hell, I'm driving this every day. This is ridiculous. This is just annoying. <laughs> so therefore, the reward of driving something that's zero emission, let's say, so a full EV, doing all the boring commuting journeys, doing all the hack, you know, yeah. the family run hack stuff, and then you've got a TVR for the weekend. Basically, I try and I look at it like offsetting. If you're not paying any tax on your car, your electric car, and your fuel bills are a fraction, and your mm. servicing bills are a fraction, so your outgoings are lower week week to week. Yeah. Spend that money on a classic. Yeah. You know that is your yin and yang. Exactly, and this is what you know. I always say to people, I'm not saying push everything off a cliff when I'm, I'm promoting electric cars. No. We do have to make these changes. Yeah. But the stuff we've enjoyed enjoy it have it in the garage and use it the weekends that's not going to kill the planet having no. that kind of stuff and it's a bit like no. i always kind of relate it to formula one it doesn't matter what you look at people always say but a formula one car in the 80s sounded great but somebody else will always go but the one in the 70s sounded better no no the one in the <laughs> 60s was better than that you yeah. know whatever it is you remember you enjoy have it and enjoy it but i think if you're in positions where people are choosing new cars i, I don't get a new range road no, uh, a, a c63 amg uh, there's a lot uh, you know, there's a lot of things which are cool but this is 2022 yes. and, I, and I and I do think I'm seeing people craving the analog so the the, the, the offset of an let's say you buy a Tesla Y like yours mm -hmm. the offset of a car like that is that a lot of people crave the sort of analog experience a bit like a mechanical watch yep. it's not more accurate than the digital clock on there yep but it doesn't have maybe as much soul as, as this. Yeah. So therefore, at I, I, the weekend, I like a three-pedal car with an engine, you know, that's maybe not got, you know, my Dodge hasn't got power steering, it's got non-servo drum yeah, brakes. Amazing. I mean, it's properly physical. And I like that because it's totally different to the Mach-E that I'm driving at the moment yeah. or, or whatever. So I miss the clutch, I have to say. Yeah. yeah. Hardly, I don't miss a clutch on the M25. Hardly ever. It's like literally if we get a pie exchange, I'll take it and it's got a clutch and stuff. And I'm like, that's okay. That's Really? Yeah. Like <laughs> it, it's, it's almost becoming, it's almost fading out, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've got a pickup truck that we use for towing a massive trailer that we move cars around on. Yeah. And that's automatic as well. And I think, I wish that was a manual, at have least you, so that I could have some clutch control. You don't have a TVR now? No, no. We're talking a few years ago. You need to buy a bloody TVR. Yeah. The last one I had was a TVR Griffith and I pulled it out of a barn full of rats. Did a full restoration on it. Um, it was brilliant. I loved it. I mean, it was a, it was a pain in the backside. I remember going to a car meet once. I just got petrol before we then got to the meet, so I had enough to come back. And then yeah. it wouldn't start in the petrol station. It had the typical hot start problem. And so I was kind of looking at the car meet from across the petrol over the road. You, you know? left your car in the. I had to leave it at the petrol station. <laughs> I wouldn't even make the car meet. But I love my TV. Honestly, oh. like I said, there was just a, a, a character about them. But. There is a lot. There's a guy converting a TVR to EV. I, I think it would be quite cool. I like the, the, the irony of it. Like, it's almost 
It almost shouldn't happen, but I never liked the six straight six inches on TVR. So I love the V8s, but straight sixes. So take that out, yeah, and have this thing that's normally known for being so loud and brutal. Yeah, electric. Yeah, and it'd be really easy to do, I think, because you just got this easy kind of scaffolding chassis. The chassis is quite just easy. Mount what yeah. you like to it, really. Yeah, can't you? yeah. 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 Brackets, so. You must have had some weird trade-ins at your place, like people turning up in like I don't know C63 AMG and going, I've had enough. Going full EV, yeah. this is what I want. We get loads of quite nice stuff, and, and the weird thing is, like, I think, uh, I remember taking an Audi R8, we took one in part exchange, and, because um, you never buy stuff like that in a trade, I think it's too too risky, but if you know the previous owner, you, you get to know a bit more. Yeah. R8, and I thought, this would be great fun to take this out, and I remember going, God, this is a, just disappointing, like, <laughs> it's, it was good in a, in a noisy way, but it, it, yeah. it, it was actually slow and unresponsive and jerky, and yeah. And I remember thinking, oh no, it's, it's, it's failed to meet what I wanted it to be, yeah, because yeah. you're used to that kind of instant throttle of a Tesla, and yeah, it's sort of disappointed in a way, yeah. but there is a thing about that, and I, I do get it. I, what I don't get the most is is having something that you, like I used to have a BMW M5 E39 V8, loved it. I, I liked that because I could go into a track day at the weekend, be a hooligan, but put my family in it in the yeah. week, and then I could go to a business meeting and it wouldn't be too leery in the car park. Yeah, yeah. And I loved so it. So it did a bit of everything. It did a bit of everything, you know, and it satisfied my need for V8s and stuff like that. But. I remember just driving up motorways and it thinking, I could be in anything. I can't I can't hit a V8 unless I change down and sound like an idiot. You yeah. know? All you're trying uh, to do is tickle it to get 30 something to the gallon if you can. Exactly, exactly. So it was uh, it was a great car. Yeah. But I just couldn't picture buying something like that now. I Especially know exactly. with fuel prices as they are and come to service time, God, you'd be scared of the servicing costs. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I, I just think, you know, actually you've got this, this car that shouts and everything, but on a, on a motorway it may as well be two litre diesel. It doesn't the, the, really matter, you know. I think people forget, like, what what fit for purpose is anymore and what journeys they typically do. Yeah. I'm sure you've had this conversation with people all the time, but like, are you a two car family? If so, one car could be this, one car could be that. Yeah. And so many people I, I meet, you know, they, they've got a huge SUV and they'll say something like, yeah, but like, it's perfect when we go skiing in January. And I go, right, and how long do you go skiing for? And they go, well, a week. I go, yeah. so, so one week yeah. out of 50, 52 weeks of the year, you're buying a car that does that? Yeah. For that, yeah, just hire one. Yeah, I get that. You could hire the best Range Rover in the world for one week. Yeah, I get people saying, "No, I have a Range Rover because we tow our caravan. We go away every August." And you're like, "Well, that's like wearing wellies all year round, just in case, for the, in case you go for a walk in the mud." And yeah. I, I just simply <laughs> don't understand it because you're like, "I get it. Okay, you want to tow a trailer sometimes." Yeah. So hire a car, or I don't know. I bet you've got a friend who's got a bloody Discovery with a tow bar that they don't probably use. Yeah. And just say, "I tell you what." I give you 300 quid if I can borrow your disco for the next four days. Yeah. And they'll go, well, all right, well, you can have my car, I'll have yours. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it, they'll, they'll jump at the chance, but why would you drive a sort of inappropriate car all year yeah. for one week? Yeah, that's that, that's and, a don't and for get. most people as well, like, it, we're doing some stuff with the sort of more affordable EVs and, you know, they're cheaper, they're smaller batteries. I don't think you need massive batteries in stuff. I think no. for most of what most people do nearly every day, it's fine, especially the second cars, especially the second cars. Especially car. second cars, um, yeah. yeah. And then, yes, even if once a month you uh, are going to go away and see Aunt Bessie in Norfolk, then you can hire a Passat Estate or something like that. It would yeah. be a far better use of uh, vehicles, you know, yeah, potentially. Yeah. But it, it absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and case in point, these things, we were talking about these before you turned the camera mm. on about out voxel amperas you know they're a really they're an old design now but yeah. actually still really relevant yeah. and when, when when they were i don't know let's say two years old or something they were tanking in value because people were scared that batteries would grenade and you know the, the 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 warranty would run out and the car would be worthless and it's so weird how it's they bounce straight back up because people have gone do you know what? They're actually really good. It and lost like half its value in the first year, and then since then has pretty much stayed the same. It's there. still desirable, and I've yeah, seen this do. kind of demand constantly growing. Yeah. Um, I used to say this to people. So, on, you know, on a summer's day, I get over 40 miles EV only. Yeah. Right? And people people go, oh, but 40 miles doesn't get you any. They go, actually, 40 miles, like my wife typically does, what, 5,000 miles a year? Yeah. 40 miles a day yeah. is actually quite a lot of local stuff. It is. And that's all the boring journeys. That, yeah. And I'm preheating it, and I was like, "This is cool." Yeah, 
it, it, it goes to show, and it, these have nothing else, a bit of a springboard towards full EVs. And we get a lot of people with plug-in hybrid stuff that then go to full electric, yeah. and that's great. And I think, you know, hybrids, I mean, plug-in hybrids sometimes get stick. I think some people with full EVs, almost, there's like almost like a snobbery thing, isn't it? It's there? a tribal but, thing. Yeah, and, and, I, think, and I, think, I think full EVs better, absolutely. But I think these do serve a purpose in that they can be a bit of a stepping stone to mm. full EV for a number of people. They're um, the gateway drug, Richard. That's yeah, pretty much, yeah. These are, the, these are the gateway drugs. So they do have a, a, a place and a time, but you know, you do have to just plug them in all the time because you would then need to, yeah. you want to get the most out of the electric sort of thing, you know, so. This got my um, wife into plug-in cars. Yeah. And it got my kids interested in pulling up and they used to fight over the charging cable. Yeah. I'm plugging it in, you plugged it in yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I'm plugging it in today. And like they'd get out of the car after school and run round to the door and do it. And I'm like, that, it's a behavioral thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then uh, it becomes the norm and then and actually the lifetime miles per gallon on this is, is 86 miles per gallon I was so. amazed when you showed me that see I knew it was good oh yeah it's the little leaf 85.9 miles, miles, miles per gallon so don't tell me that, that and this is used quite a lot well actually you go you know we had a South Coast because people will drive from the south coast here up to London so of course after the first 30 40 miles it goes on to petrol fuel, yeah. and it uses petrol then but actually you know that's its lifetime for 67,000 miles 86 miles per gallon that's not bad that's as really a stepping good. stone into EV, is it's it? Really so. good. I remember this. I love this graphics. Energy efficiency. Yeah, yeah. I remember this. Well, I was only 84% good driver on that journey. But you can follow the efficiency tips, Richard. This is it. So, well, the climate's on everything here, I think, yeah, as well. Got it on. Oh, these are good cars. So what did we solve there? I think you can still be a petrol head yep. and like EVs. I think 100%. I think you still have a step with that sort of historic oh. thing that you remember. Uh, I what, think what, what car did you remember as a teenager that you haven't managed to buy yet, by the way? What do I remember as a teenager that yeah. I've never managed to buy? I'd like to buy a Lotus Carlton. Mm, I remember the Lotus. We must be a pretty similar I, range. I, because the Lotus Carlton was just something's legend out of I nowhere. Mean, it was an absolute legend. And <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people went for the Cosworth because that's mm. the car you saw more of. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it was an amazing car. But I would always be like, yeah, why would you buy a Cosworth when you could get a... A Lotus Carlton. I mean, it's a proper. It came out of nowhere muscle. as well, didn't it? Yeah. It was amazing. So I remember. I would do that. I would do that. Yeah, Lotus Carlton's a good one, and they're worth good money these days. I mean, all this stuff is worth good money. I mean, see how much Sierra Cosworths and Escort Cosworths go for. It's crazy. We've watched all this stuff. Yeah. As we get middle age, and you can probably afford these toys, as they're then going back up in they value. Are, they Great are. investments, aren't they? Just chasing yeah. history. I remember I always wanted a uh, VW Golf oak green big bumper. 16 valve. Yeah. Well, I actually managed to get one of them and do a bit of a restoration on that a few years ago. That was really good. But this Peugeot 205 and an E30 yeah. BMW, uh, they're still, still want. They still need some of that in my life. And, E30, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 205. Yeah. Gol Golf GTI Mark II is, is my favourite. That's it. My favourite GTI actually. Yeah. Overall. I, I, I loved it, having that the one I restored. And actually, it still drove really nicely. It's actually still use it you know and yeah. i love seeing them when people are using them every day yeah. yeah 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 there's nothing better when you do see a car actually just being used i've just remembered it's got two horns isn't it it's got a little pedestrian oh wait i'll have to be in drive i think in case you're moving forward that's a little, it. little, it's a polite horn. a little polite horn it's instead a, of going excuse me instead yeah, of that that's one. aggressive yeah you've got aggressive and that's polite. that's like sorry guys you're just in my way you, yeah you, just you, I like it. And drive, reverse. Still got the reversing camera and everything. Everything's been fine on this oh, car. Yeah. Just gets a bit grubby at the back. Then you've got your drive and low. Yeah, <laughs> your yeah. low gear Up for hills. your region. Um, now this is this has been good as gold. He's not. He's saying he's not doing the hard sell on me. I think he is doing it. It's, it's, it's soft sell. Actually, it's soft it's, sell. It's a very, the car sells itself. It's a very good car. <laughs> Hence why I bought it in the first place. It's still got, it's still got the, the touch-up paint. This is the, it. The General Motors touch-up paint. It's still, it? still there. It's like a time warp, this thing, isn't it? I do like it. I have to say, I do always like them. It's cool. been amazing. How genuinely, we've never had any single issue. We just serviced it, and that's it. Good. So it's been really good. Good. Excellent. Uh, you've got to catch a train, Johnny, so um, it's been a pleasure. By the way, guys, whether this comes out before this video or his video, Johnny's just been borrowing my Model Y, and what have you been doing with that? You've been all Basically, over the place. I drove around, all the way up to Scotland and around a bit in Scotland, then back down again to do an extended real-world yeah. road test. Because I didn't drive it when it was first launched, and I thought, I'll just do some proper miles in it. But that's just the first time like, time in a test, so you're doing some proper mileage some real in a few time. days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's, it's really changed my view. 
Does it? Yeah. Well, okay, that's interesting. Especially think, the interior build quality and stuff like that. Yeah, see, I've never found that really a problem. There's, yeah. there's a couple of patches where you get the old Friday car, but they've actually, they get a bad wrapper thing. Actually, yeah. I've had Tessas, I just saw them 140,000 miles. It was fine. There was no issue with it. Mm. We've got 100,000 miles. It's fine. So there have been a few sketchy bits in the past, but yeah. generally now they're pretty good. But I think with as with a lot of cars now you have the app integration and functionality and i guess with press cars you tend not to get our app connections and stuff like that but yep. just getting to live with it and know it a bit more and the things it can do and the shortcuts and the software hopefully that's been useful but i think a lot of modern cars are like that they're not just turn the key and go anymore there's a whole load of there's stuff a lot of brain to see and do yeah well, no, I've really enjoyed. Well, thank you for letting me put. I reckon I've done over a thousand miles, but you'll be able to tell me. Yeah, because you'll be able to tell exactly where you've been. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> Tracking you around. Yeah, no, you'd be, I'm intrigued to know exactly how many miles I've done. I don't. Uh, know. You did. A, you did um, uh, some three thousand now, and I think it had thirteen hundred when I gave it to you. So you've done seventeen hundred miles. Have I really? I think, yeah, something like that. Fifteen hundred miles. I can okay, look exactly. I've done a lot. So we look forward to seeing your video. So anyone watching this who isn't subscribed to Johnny's Late Break Show, make sure you are now that video. Looking forward to that. And of course, the other videos that you made along the way While as well. I was in, I yeah. was in Scotland. Yeah, I did a barn find and a couple of car collection things. That's good. What's next week? Uh, well, uh, let me think. Well, today, mm -hmm. uh, which is irrelevant, is the new Lotus uh, Electra walk around oh, okay. video. So okay. their first SUV, their first four-door electric thing. I want to see that. Is it good? It, well, it's like... A good-looking Lamborghini Urus. Mm, okay, it's quite a long does, way to make a does, Urus does, look good. It's yeah. fully electric. <laughs> I think <laughs> okay. they've done a right job. I mean, hopefully it will sell. Yeah, yeah. So that they can build like little two. Is this, a, is this a, the you know how Lotus is going on this new EV band? It's going. Then get the production. It's going up to around. that to EV to yeah. sort of family orientated, and then it's going to go back to sort of hardcore. Okay. Roadsters and stuff. I think. Yeah, it'd be good again. Like be good Porsche to see one did those. with the KN. Yeah. It's yeah. the same, but EV. Be good to see that name keep going, you know. And it was revive. impressive. Yeah, good. It's another Look EV that. that you'll be selling in three years. Well, hopefully, yeah. yeah, yeah well, <laughs> I mean, I just do this because I like playing with cars and trying lots of different cars. Yeah. So uh, I have to buy them and sell them to do so. So um, thanks for your, your time, Johnny, doing this video. So um, yeah, make sure everyone gives it a thumbs up, subscribe, and checks out Johnny's channel as well. Some really fascinating videos, EVs and classic cars, much like myself, I think. Johnny, even to yeah. both. So. Next time I see you, I want you to have bought a TVR. Yeah, I do. I look, I look every Cerber, now and then. Cerber is my favourite. Yeah, I had a Serb 4.2. Did you? Yeah. Oh, you naughty swan. I loved it, because I, I had a charge, so it had back seats, yeah. and she could get in it. And then I said, no, no, we went out for a weekend. You've got to get trained. We went out for a weekend. I said, right, this is a practical family car. It makes a lot of noise, I know. And then the exhaust fell off after about two miles and caught, and we were just stuck by the side of the road until I could get the exhaust kind and of like, taken off. And I was this like, is, oh, this is all over. This doesn't work. So I loved the Cerber, though. It was brilliant. Fantastic <laughs> car. The interior, like nothing else. It is. Uh, a V8 Cerbera, very nice. The electric one, I quite like the idea, of just for the kind of, just to piss people off. And that, that should be noisy, but it's actually yeah. really quite, it's quite like that as well. But the Cigaris is the goal. And again, I've just watched them go up in price. Yeah. The Cigaris are always like, I want to buy a Cigaris without an engine and just put it in my lounge. Just look at it you for a bit of glass. You could find a Cigaris without an engine. Probably a non-working <laughs> engine. It's not an uncommon scenario with a Cigaris. But yeah, so with a, a day where I've got a, a house with a glass wall, I mean, like work is what I've built up as my house, really. I was going to say, basically, you're talking about your dealership. Right? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's like my house, really. Uh, I need to buy a better house. Um, but, yeah, a house with a glass wall and a cigar is behind it. That's yeah. that's one of the life goals, yeah. That'd be good. There and then go. put the V8 into a Fisker Karma, just to really piss people off. It's going to take that CVT thingy out of it. But, yeah, <laughs> a Fisker Karma looking, was a good-looking thing. I enjoyed trying one of them in the States. Yeah, that was good. Anyway, we better call it wraps. You better okay. catch a train. So I don't want to miss my train because I get paranoid about it. Yeah, this. no, you Seriously. better jump on the. You can tell I'm tetchy, can't you? Yeah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you later.